In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. And we're back. Chaplain's Report today. I'm not going to be able to top what I just talked about. I'm just not. Like I said, I've been doing these Chaplain's Report. There's hundreds of them now. I guarantee you all of them combined haven't done a, an, as much to convince people of the love of Christ as that three-minute video does. And, and I'm saying that not poor-mouthing. I think my stuff's pretty good. It doesn't come close to that. But I do have something I want to convey in the Chaplain's Report, and it really ties into both things that we talked about. It ties into what Nikki Haley was talking about, and it definitely ties in to what we just saw in uh, the um, with uh, Brant Jean. To really understand this passage, you need to know that the Church of Philippi, they had fallen in to following worldly leaders. They had started following people that were not reputable, that they were making decisions based on worldly standards. They were starting to bring in parts of paganism and trying to integrate them into Christianity. That they were all into food and uh, all kinds of pleasures of the flesh, that kind of thing. And Paul was about ready. He'd had enough of it, and he wanted to convey them the danger in following such people. And so this is the passage that Paul writes in Philippians 3, 14 through 17. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as are perfect, have this attitude. And if in anything you have a different attitude, God will reveal that also to you. However, let us keep living by that same standard to which we have attained. Brethren, join in following my example, and observe those who walk according to the pattern you have in us. Now, Paul, I find this part of the letter absolutely fascinating because of a couple things. First, he says, follow my example, and that you have a pattern in us. When he says us, he's talking, of course, about the apostles himself, Peter, the other church leaders that are there. And upon first glance, don't you look at that and think, that's a little arrogant, Paul. You're saying, everybody follow what I'm doing. You see me doing it, you need to be doing it too. You see my, uh, my, my fellow apostles, you see Peter and Matthew and all the other, you see what they're doing, you do what they do. The first inclination of that is, isn't that arrogant? But then you remember that Paul refers to himself as the chiefest among sinners. Paul was not somebody that saw himself as perfect. He was far from it. He said, if anything, I'm the worst one out of all of you. There's another passage that we won't go into right now because it's not our key passage of the day. But a brief summary of it is, Look, I used to murder Christians and did it with a clear conscience. That's who Paul was. And now he is out there in the church telling them, you follow my example. You do what I'm doing, you do what the apostles are doing. That's what you're supposed to do. That doesn't make any sense unless you understand the transformation that Paul went through. You see, in saying this, Paul knows that he is an imperfect person. He knows that he messes up. He knows that he is as flawed as anybody in the church. So much so that people were afraid that he was some kind of plant and it was a conspiracy when he first joined because of how zealous he was in murdering Christians. He wanted to stamp Christianity off the face of the planet. That's who Paul used to be. And now he's the one saying, all you Christians, yeah, you do what I'm doing. You follow my pattern. Why? 
Because if you're reading this particular passage, you understand, because look back at verse 14, that I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Jesus Christ. Yeah, he's telling him, follow my example. You know why? Because he's following Christ's example. This is a pattern that flows forth for all of biblical ministry. We're supposed to be examples to other people, but we can only be that example if we're following the true example. We can help other people out. We can help exemplify for them the traits that Jesus Christ had, but we can only do it if we're following Christ. And by the way, this is the way that all biblical leadership works. Why are the elders, and there are passages to back up each one of these, why are the elders to be modeled after? Why are you supposed to follow what the elders are doing? Because they're following what Christ told them to do. Why are you following what your husband's doing? Because he is the representative of Christ in our household. Why is it that children should listen to their mother? Because she's following the example of Christ. Why is it that young men in the church ought to be following what the older men in church are doing? Because they are supposed to be following the example of Christ. It all goes back to that. It's the same answer every single time. We can be examples to others. Just like we saw in that video a few minutes ago. Just like Nikki Haley saw in her own mother. It only works when you're following the example of Christ. That's how to be an example to another person. That's how other people look at you and say, I'm doing what he's doing. I'm having what he's having. If you're living the way that Christ called us to, if we're pressing up towards that call, then there are going to be other people that look at us and say, hey, I can do it too. And that's what Jesus always intended. You'll notice that all throughout the gospel, all throughout the gospel, Jesus never told anybody how to be saved. I mean, he instructed them. But after he was gone, after that ascension, you didn't hear voices coming from heaven where Jesus was telling people what to do, even with Paul. If you look in the conversion story of Paul in the book of Acts, he tells Paul to go to a certain person, a Christian, and he will tell you what you need to do to be saved. This was always Jesus' plan. So yeah, Jesus is the perfect example that we're all supposed to follow. But here on earth, we as Christians are supposed to fulfill at least a part of that role. And we can only do that if we're following the perfect example of Christ. And so this is the reason that Bryant Sean, the reason that he's inspiring so many people, not because he's so great, even though I think that he is pretty great. It's because he is following the example of Christ. That's what people find compelling. That's what people look at. If he didn't have the teachings of Christ in his life, I guarantee you there's no way he would have been able to do that. No way. Forgiveness and mercy are actually fairly new concepts. If you're looking at the pre-Christian world, and the part of the world that still doesn't have a Christianity, forgiveness is not something that's held up as a virtue. In fact, in many cultures, it's viewed as pretty negative. Like you're just letting somebody get away with something. Christianity was the first religion to look at forgiveness as a good thing. That espoused it as something that we ought to be striving for. And so you're looking at this. Paul is telling us that you follow my pattern and the pattern that we've set out for you because we're following Christ. You know, sometimes when you're walking along, you can't necessarily see the person at the front of the line, but you know where they are and you know where they're heading because you're following the person in front of you. Now, that person in front of you may have no idea where they're going, but as long as they're following a leader that does, in this case Christ, then following them is okay. Now, you got to be careful because there are going to be some people that tell you that they're following Christ and really aren't. But the point is, as long as you find somebody that is genuinely following Christ, then you can follow them and be sure that you're going to be led in a good direction. And here's the thing. There's probably somebody behind you following as well. And that ought to inspire us to be the best that we can be so that other people don't go led astray. And so when I see examples like this of, of a person, the love of Christ dwelling in them and that being, uh, that being exemplified, in the video we watch where you can even go to the point where you can forgive and genuinely desire the best, 
for a person that murdered a member of your own family? That's the kind of example that I want to follow. And the reason that I want to follow that example is because that's the kind of person that I eventually want to be. Because I want to be following the true example of Jesus Christ. And I pray, I pray that in my life there will be other people that look to me and see that example being played out and they follow the pattern that I set forth as well. If I do that, then I will have led a very, very successful life. Stay the course, friends. Just in case you were wondering, yes, I am a straight white Christian male and a small government constitutionalist, which means I have no chance of getting any help from the government and wouldn't accept their help even if they offered. Which means I'm going to need you to like and subscribe because my gun collection is not going to pay for itself.